This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Honor thy word, our Heavenly Father, as we study today in Jesus' name. Amen. On the last broadcast in the series, I read the last part of John chapter 2, and we discussed down to the verse where Jesus said to them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it up in three days. Now that's in verse 19. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? Now, of course they thought he was speaking of the temple there in Jerusalem. But listen, he spake of the temple of his body, Therefore he was risen from the dead. His disciples remembered that he had said this unto them. They believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man. Now, any time that I or any other Christian seems to think that we are able to do anything or be anything apart from Jesus Christ, all we need do to humble our hearts is to read those verses. Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men. And he needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. God knows that man is helpless and hopeless and hell-bound, strengthless without God. And so Jesus did not commit himself to men. Now, let me discuss with you these verses. Then we'll move on in our study to this tremendous third chapter and the new birth. Now, Jesus drove the money changers out of the temple and the oxen and the sheep out of the temple. And he said, "Uh, you've made my father's house a house of merchandise. Now, I emphasize that on the last broadcast. And I said that you should support a church where they major in the spiritual and minor in other things, not where they major in things and minor in the spiritual things. Now, today, many churches spend much more time entertaining and feeding than they do praying and having revivals, and you know that. So Jesus said, destroy this temple, and I'll raise it up in three days. Now, they thought that he was speaking of their temple where they met to worship. Now, in Matthew chapter 27, we find a very interesting statement concerning this matter. Jesus was on the cross, and two thieves, one on either side, And in verse 40 of Matthew 27, we read in verse 39, They that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. Now, they passed by, and they wagged their heads, and here's what they said. Thou that destroys the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Now listen, beloved. Jesus made that statement immediately after he entered his public ministry, and it's been about three and a half years And they never forgot it. They never forgot what Jesus said about destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. Let me say this. There are buildings and programs and denominations that are getting the worship and the honor and the praise and the adoration that Jesus should be getting. It doesn't bother some church members to hear a man take God's name in vain. But you'd better not say anything about their church, mister. They'll let you know right quick how they feel about you if you say something about their church. Now, these people were ready to kill the Lamb of God. They were ready to stone him and destroy him. And they said, give us Barabbas and kill Jesus. He healed their sick. He 
straightened out the limbs of their crippled, and he raised the dead, and he fed the hungry, but it didn't make any difference how much good he had done. It made no difference to them how good he was. He had spoken against their temple, so they thought. Now let me show you something. He was speaking to the religious leaders and the religious people of his day and his hour, but they did not understand. The resurrection is taught throughout the Old Testament. And the sufferings of Christ, Isaiah 53. Read Isaiah 53. They had Isaiah. They had the scroll of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Zechariah, and they're filled with the sufferings of Jesus and the death of Jesus and so on. But they could not see it. They were spiritually blinded by religion, and they had more love love and more devotion uh, directed to the temple than they could ever have told the Lamb of God because they were spiritually ignorant, they were spiritually blind, and they could not see and understand that the Lamb of God must die and His blood must be shed for the remission of sin. So they said it took us 40 years to build it. We, our fathers, spent 40 years building this temple. And you talk about raised up in three days. But he spake of the temple of his body. Now, when Jesus was risen, now listen, even his disciples did not understand until after his resurrection. And when Jesus was raised from the dead, they believed the scripture. They believed the word which Jesus had said. They understood that when he said, destroy this temple, he was speaking of his own body. But he did not commit himself to them because he knew what was in man. Now, with that in mind, I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to read two or three verses there. And then I'm going to read two or three verses in another chapter. And I want to make a statement today. And I want you to listen very carefully to the rest of this broadcast, the rest of this sermon. Now, in 1 Corinthians 15, the minister to whom God revealed the mystery that had been hidden from eternity ages of ages, and it had not been known under the prophets, God revealed it to the Apostle Paul. And he was the minister to the Gentiles, and he said, I magnify my office. Now, in 1 Corinthians 15, 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Now, Paul said, I preached the gospel. Now, you know what the priest preached in the days of Jesus? They preached the traditions of men. They preached the rituals and the programs of religion, and they could not understand that the Lamb must be slain, buried, and raised as prophesied and declared in the Word of God and as He declared. They couldn't see it. Now, Paul said, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, the gospel. All right, Paul, if you declared the gospel to the people in Corinth, what did you declare? Watch it by which also ye are saved. Now that's verse 2, 1 Corinthians 15, 2, by which ye are saved. Now remember, in John chapter 2, after his resurrection, the disciples believed. They believed. You see, Jesus told them again and again and again, they'll destroy me, that is, they'll crucify me, and they'll bury me, but I'll rise again the third day. And he told them over and over and over again, but they couldn't understand it. They couldn't see it. They couldn't grasp it. Then after he was raised from the dead, it finally dawned on them, and they believed. So the disciples believed. And Paul said, I preach to you people at Corinth, and you believe the gospel, and you're saved, by which also ye are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye believed in vain. That is, if you really heard in the heart, and keep in the heart that faith, that you exercised when you heard the gospel. Now, what did he preach? He said, I preached the gospel. You heard the gospel. You received the gospel. You stand in the gospel, and you're saved by the gospel. What is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, 3. I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. What did you receive, Paul? I received how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. But wait a minute. He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That He was seen of Cephas, and of the twelve. And after that, He was seen of above five hundred brethren. And Paul said, most of them are alive today. Now, what am I trying to do today by the grace of God? What am I attempting to do on the gospel hour? 
here's what I'm trying to do. In this day of liberalism and modernism, in this day of eating and dancing and carnivals and fairs and shindigs and, and uh, boogie woogie and jazz and uh, entertainment, the house of God has become a social sinner. And we hear a little sermonette, 15 minutes on Sunday morning, many times no Sunday night service, but a three hour feed and uh, fellowship, and eating, and entertaining two or three nights out of the week. Sermonettes on Sunday, but long programs of eating and entertainment through the nights that used to be spent in prayer meetings and revival. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that God's minister delivers the gospel. He preaches the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus according to the Scriptures. And it is impossible for any man or any woman or any person to be saved apart from hearing the Word of God, the Scriptures. And if you are attending a church where the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus is not preached according to the Scriptures, then whether you know it or not, you belong to a liberal church. You're supporting a modernist, and if you've ever been saved, you'll lose your reward. You'll have no trophies to lay at his feet when we crown him Lord of all. You will be held responsible and accountable for the person, the church, or the program you support. When I say, preacher, if I go with a sincere heart, and if I give my money with a sincere heart, don't you think God will reward me? I think God will do exactly what God said he would do. If you build upon the foundation wood, hay, and stubble, If you do not build gold, silver, and precious stones, your works will be burned. Now, there is such a thing as a person being saved and losing their reward. Read 1 Corinthians 3, verses 12 and following, 13, 14, 15, and many, many other scriptures that clearly teach that every believer will be rewarded according to his or her faithful labors and according to their faithful stewardship. So... We're saved by hearing the gospel. And the gospel preacher preaches the cross, the blood, the shedding of the blood of the Lamb, according to the Scriptures. Jesus said, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up. He was speaking of his body. And Jesus came in a body. He was in the bosom of the Father. And he took a body of flesh that he might taste death. For every man. And as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also are likewise took part. He took the flesh, that in the flesh he might conquer the world, the flesh and the devil, death, hell, and the grave. And he did conquer, and we are more than conquerors through him, but only through him. So, it is a divine imperative that you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus according to scriptures. Now, look at verse 12 in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 12. 1 Corinthians 15, 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now, you see, the Sadducees, and they were present that day, when Jesus chased out the money changers and the animals and turned over the tables, and he said, you've made my father's house a house of merchandise. The Sadducees were there, and they did not believe in a resurrection. They taught that there was no resurrection. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? Now, this is 1 Corinthians 15, 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. And your faith is vain. A sermon that denies the resurrection is empty. A person who tells me that they are saved, and yet they deny the bodily resurrection of Jesus, they are lost because their faith is vain. It is empty. It is void of saving power. So if you do not believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures, you're not saved. You can't be saved apart from his resurrection. Yea, now this is verse 15, yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. If Jesus did not rise again, as declared in the Bible, then every minister of the gospel is a false witness and a liar, every minister that preaches the resurrection. All right. But that is, thank God, he did come back. He did rise. He did. 
He did conquer death, hell, and the grave, and he rose again as was declared in the Scriptures, according to the Scriptures. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if there be, if so be, that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fall, fall asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Beloved, God to have mercy on the miserable preacher the miserable evangelist, the miserable Bible teacher, the miserable Sunday school teacher, the miserable professing church member that denies the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now listen. He said to those religious leaders in the temple that day, when he had chased out the animals and turned over the tables and declared that you've made the house of God, a house of merchandise, a place that is for prayer and worship, you have turned into a house of wares and selling and buying and changing money. Now he said, you destroy this temple. You go ahead and destroy it. He knew that they would want to stone him and push him over the precipice and kill him. They, he knew that. So he said, you go right ahead and destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. They were so spiritually ignorant and so spiritually blind, they had no idea that he was speaking of his body. And so they accused him of threatening to tear down the temple that it took 40 years to build. But he was talking about his body. Now listen, beloved. Jesus died... For our sins according to his scripture, according to the scriptures. He died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried according to the scriptures. He was buried with the rich. And that's what Isaiah 53 said. He made his grave with the rich. He died with the wicked. He was crucified between two thieves. He died according to the scriptures. He was buried according to the scriptures. And he rose again according to the scriptures. And he ascended according to the scriptures. Now hear me and hear me well. It is a divine imperative that you believe in the shed blood of the Lamb of God according to the Word of God. It is a divine imperative that you believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus according to the Word of God. If you hope to step inside the pearly gates and see the face of Jesus and hear the Father say, Well done. Now the disciples believed after his resurrection. You and I are on this side of the resurrection. And we know that he rose again. I know it because he lives in my heart. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him up from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now in the very outset of his ministry, the marriage at Cana, he changed the water into wine. And that signifies the cleansing power of the shed blood of the precious Lamb of God. The marriage at Cana set forth the shedding of the blood that cleanses from all sin and the salvation of the sinner by faith in the cleansing blood. Now, in the temple, he teaches and he preaches his bodily resurrection. You tear this body down and I'll raise it up in three days. But they rejected the message of the resurrection. If you reject the message of the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, you cannot enter heaven. It is a divine imperative that you believe in the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection according to the scriptures. Crucified for the remission of sins, raised that we might be justified. He lives, he sits at the right hand of God making intercession for believers now. And he's there to save if you'll believe in the heart and confess with your mouth. Father, honor thy precious word, the precious name of Jesus, and the precious blood that he shed for the remission of sin. Save every soul that's under conviction 
especially that soul that's nearest hell, O God. Reclaim the backslidden and revive the indifferent, and we'll give God the praise. May this be the day when some believer who is supporting a liberal or a modernist will wake up and support the true gospel and the true church. In Jesus' name, amen.